Hello again. Welcome back. Last time we talked about the Needham Schroeder protocol, and we mentioned that uh, there's certain assumptions that you have to make for the protocol to actually work. Well, let's talk about some attacks on the protocol. Okay, recall earlier on we said in discussing any protocol, you want to ask certain questions. Is authenticity uh, assured? Is secrecy assured? Is it possible to impersonate one or more of the parties of the protocol? Can you interject messages into the protocol in such a way as to, as to mess things up, you know, if you're the attacker? Um, what tools can the attacker deploy? And finally, if a key is compromised, what are the consequences? Well, let's see. For Needham Schroeder, and here it is again, uh, Denning and Sacco pointed out that there is a potential compromise to this, and it, it works as follows. Suppose that an attacker C has been uh, observing previous runs of the protocol, uh, and there may have been many, many of them, and has been able to break one of the session keys used in an earlier run of the protocol. And suppose also that uh, the attacker has saved the messages from that particular run of the protocol. So in particular, it, it knows what KAB is, and it knows what protocol, what run of the protocol that was used in. Well then what, what C can do is take message three of the protocol and send it to B, okay? Remember in Needham Schroeder, uh, B didn't know it was participating in this protocol until it received message three. And so there's no way for it to know whether steps one and two of the protocol have occurred or not. Um, so anyway, uh, C sends to B this message, KAB and A encrypted with KBS. And there's no way for B to know that this isn't a newly generated key and that it's supposed to be communicating with S. So then it, it just appropriately responds uh, with message four of the protocol and then C appropriately responds and, uh, and they blithely con continue using this key uh, between C and B, but B thinks it's communicating with A and may disclose information which is only appropriate for it to disclose to A. Okay, what's the problem? Well, the problem is that message three of the protocol is not protected by a nonce, and so there's no way for B to know whether that message is in fact fresh or not. And you might think about how you might uh, remedy this problem uh, and, and revise the protocol slightly to take care of it. An example attack uh, is that in, in the scenario of a company, say a comp uh, an employee knows that he's going to be fired, he can actually uh, store up keys for all of the servers on the company's systems and, um, and then subsequently log into any of those servers and no one would be any the wiser because the keys apparently are, are legitimate. There was another attack on this pointed out by Bauer and, and colleagues. Um, and what Bauer pointed out was that if KAS, the key that A and S share, um, were compromised, then anybody could impersonate A at any point um, and, and establish communication with any other party because the way that S knows that a message is actually coming from A is, is by the fact that they share a, a secret key. Um, and we, we asked earlier whether it's legitimate to, to worry about whether a key has been compromised, but certainly it's something to, to consider. Okay, so uh, yeah, here's that question. Are, there, are the attacks, you know, these attacks assume that the keys have been compromised. Is that really fair to worry about? because any cryptographic protocol is going to assume that we have certain secure keys. And the answer is yes and no, depending upon the strength of the encryption. And so think about how, how you might solve these problems or remediate these flaws in these protocols. Okay, so what have we said? Well, we've looked at the needham schroeder protocol. It's a historically very important protocol, but people have pointed out that there are certain flaws in it and certain attacks which may be valid attacks against these protocols. Uh, and this kind of illustrates that even though a protocol has been around a long time, uh, there still may be residual flaws in it. And it's very difficult to get a protocol entirely correct because it's difficult to consider all the possible ways that an attacker might proceed. Thanks.